Okay, let's talk today about bread. Not the 70s rock group, but actual bread. At the onset, I'm going to say that, uh, to me, bread is a uh, hmm, kind of a, almost like a food additive. It's really not necessary <clears throat> in human nutrition. It's not the healthiest food. Uh, it's not really concentrated nutrients. It does supply carbohydrates. If it's whole grain bread, you're getting a form of a fiber called insoluble fiber, which is pretty healthy. It's very good for the, what they call the intestinal microbiome. But, uh, you know, you can't get away from the fact that uh, sooner or later, just about everybody's going to eat some kind of bread. So, you know, the question becomes then, what are the healthier, type, what are the healthier types of bread? So I'm going to talk about a couple of them. Uh, the one of the first types is called sprouted whole grain. Sprouted bread is made from whole grains that have started to sprout from exposure to heat and moisture. Uh, the sprouting has been shown to increase the amount and availability of certain nutrients. Uh, uh, they found that uh, one study found that that uh, bread, pita bread, made with 50% sprouted wheat flour, had three times as much as uh, folate which is a B-complex vitamin, also called folic acid, uh, than pita without the sprayed, sprouted wheat, uh, wheat flour studies revealed that sprouting also increases the grain's antioxidants while de decreasing anti-nutrients like phytic acid. Phytic acid, these are element, natural elements in bread and grains which combine with uh, essential nutrients such as minerals. It binds to them and causes them to be rapidly excreted from the body. And the uh, sprouting decreases the uh, amount of these anti-nutrients found naturally in various types of bread. Uh, also, uh, the sprouting process breaks down some of the starch content, and thus doing it reduces the carbohydrate content. Uh, because of this, sprouted grains don't increase, don't increase blood glucose to the same extent as other grains. Uh, and it may be a little bit better choice if you have blood glucose problems like diabetes, or uh, or pre-diabetes insulin resistance that type of thing, uh, so uh, a good example of uh, this type of bread is what's it called Ezekiel Ezekiel bread, uh, Ezekiel uh, sprouted whole grain bread has about uh, a slice of it has 80 calories, four grams of protein, half a gram of fat, 15 grams of carbs, three grams of uh, fiber, which is pretty good for only a slice of bread. Another type of bread that's popular is sourdough bread that's made through a fer fermentation process that uh, involves yeast and bacteria to make the bread rise. <clears throat> fermentation reduces the number of uh, the amount of phytates, again, phytic acid that I mentioned, anti-nutrient that binds to minerals and in impairs absorption. Uh, there's uh, One study showed that sourdough fermentation helped to lower phytate levels by over 50% compared to using conventional yeast. Uh, the fire fermentation process involved breaks down some of the carbohydrates and proteins in grains, including gluten. So it actually has less gluten. Some people claim to have a problem with gluten, which is a primary protein. Uh, 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 but sourdough doesn't mean it's gluten-free. It still contains gluten. So people with celiac disease or, or a gluten sensitivity should still need to avoid any type of uh, bread made from gluten-containing grains such as wheat. Uh, sourdough bread has a lower glycemic index, which is a measure of the impact of fo uh, food has on blood glucose levels. Um, the uh, fermentation process causes some of the carbohydrates in sourdough, converts it into a form called resistant starch. Resistant starch is much harder to digest than normal starch. And it, it acts more like a fiber than a starch food. In other words, it's, it's much less digestible, much less likely to cause body fat gains. 100% whole wheat bread, whole grains are keep the entire grain intact, including the germ, endosperm, and bran. The bran, which is the outer layers, high in fiber. Wheat bran is very rich in fiber, insoluble fiber. There's two kinds, soluble and insoluble. Uh, uh, the the uh, whole wheat is higher in insoluble fiber. The bran and the germ of the whole wheat also contain protein, fats, vitamins, and and, and uh, while the endosperm portion is mostly starch. Uh, uh, white flour should always be avoided. If you can eat any type of bread, it should uh, always go for 100% whole wheat bread. 
And beware that uh, you have to look at the labels, read the ingredients. A lot of bread that's labeled uh, whole wheat is actually caramel-colored wheat. It's just fake white bread. It's not really whole wheat. When you buy whole wheat, you want to buy the whole grains. Ensure that it's the whole grains. So uh, you don't want to have any added sugar or vegetable oils. Oat bread is made from a combination of oats, whole wheat, flour, yeast, water, and salt. Oats, again, oats are soluble fiber, a different type of fiber. Uh, you know, they are, um, oats, oats are high in magnesium, B1, iron, and zinc. Uh, the fiber in uh, oats is called beta-glucan, which can help lower cholesterol levels, help to regulate blood sugar, and decrease blood pressure. A, a, st- a review of 28 studies found that eating 3 grams or more of oat beta-glucan per day significantly decreased LDL, so-called bad cholesterol, and total cholesterol compared to not eating oats. Oats also have their own type of uh, antioxidant, which is very powerful. So oat bread is pretty good also. Flax bread is made primarily from whole grain flours and flax seeds. One of the healthiest breads you can eat. This is because flax seeds are highly nutritious and offer a number of benefits. They are an excellent source of alpha linoleic acid, which is the precursor. Uh, it's an omega-3 fatty acid that's the nutritional precursor for the more active omega-3 fatty acids, EPA and DHEA. A, st- a review of 27 studies found that a high intake of dietary alpha linoleic acid was, its low, was associated with a lower risk of, uh, of heart disease. Uh, flax contain substances called lignans. Now, there's certain doctors that warn against eating lignans, but, you know, that's overblown. The truth is ig- lignans in the body can act as antioxidants and, it's, and actually offer anti-cancer prof- uh, 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 pr- protection. A study of 6,000 pen- uh, older women who found that those who regulate flax seeds had 18% lower chance of developing breast cancer compared to those who did not eat them. Um, what else can I say about flax? Uh, Ezekiel sprouted whole grain flax bread. It's another form of Ezekiel bread. Uh, then they have uh, 100% sprouted rye, rye bread. Rye closely resembles wheat, but it's darker and denser. Traditional rye bread is, ma- is only made from rye, rye flour. It does not contain any wheat flour, uh, whereas most modern rye breads are a combination of the two. When compared to wheat, rye is often considered more nutritious some studies suggest that rye bread may, le- may lead to greater fullness and have less of an impact on blood glucose than wheat bread. Wheat bread. Uh, an older study in 12 healthy adults found that those who consume whole grain rye bread release significantly less insulin than those who eat whole, white wheat bread. So, again, too much insulin is uh, related to I- increased body fat levels. Uh, rye, rye is high in soluble fiber content, which is, again, very good for your uh, intestinal microbiome. Uh, they have gluten-free breads. Um, uh, these things are supposedly uh, made uh, for people that have a sensitivity to gluten. Uh, this is much rarer than most people think. Most people who think they have a sensitivity to gluten, again, gluten is a primary protein in wheat, are actually sensor, uh, are actually uh, more sensitive to other food elements, uh, collectively called FODMAPs, F-O-D-M-A-P-S, which are kind of the types of carbohydrates found in certain vegetables that are more or less indigestible. They cause digestive problems in some people. But that's the usual cause of, uh, of uh, gl- the gluten problem for most people. Uh, you want to avoid all, uh, any bread that contains added sugar or fructose, uh, you want to look for a whole, 100% whole grain or sprouted, listed as the first ingredient. Make sure that each uh, each uh, portion of the bread has 3 to 5 grams of fiber and 3 to 6 grams of protein per slice. And again, no added sugar. So I think that's about it. Uh, yeah, that's about it for bread. Um, again, it's not usually part of a typical bodybuilding or athletic diet, but it is a source of carbohydrates. You know, if, you, if you're doing things like eating sandwiches, uh, it's hard to eat a sandwich without the bread. So you're going to have to have some bread. So if you have to eat bread, choose from some of the breads I mentioned in this video and you'll be fine. So that's about it for bread. Uh, if you want more information on nutrition, exercise science, anti-aging research, ergogenic aids, effective fat loss techniques, supplement science, hormonal therapy, women's health and fitness, and many more topics, 
Nobody covers more topics than I do in my Applied Metabolics publication, www.appliedmetabolics.com. When you subscribe, I'll, you, you can uh, email me and I'll send you an invitation to join my private Applied Metabolics Facebook page, where each day I, I add new information on nutrition, exercise science, and general medicine. I have an email portal on my Applied Metabolics webpage, which is exclusively for subscribers who can, ask, who can ask me short questions about anything they might have read in Applied Metabolics or anything else that comes to mind that pertains to nutrition and exercise. I will be happy to answer them as a bonus for their subscription to Applied Metabolics. Again, it's at www.appliedmetabolics.com. If you want to have the best friend you'll ever have, go to your local shelter and adopt a dog. And thank you for listening.